Grab your DeLoreans, Wargamers, because today we are going back to the mid-90s. The 1790s. The French Revolution is in full swing. They have taken Paris, and they have the Committee for Trust and Safety has issued a number of proclamations, among which is that things like Christianity are no longer welcome in the country. Oh, I'm sorry. Trust and Safety Council is wrong. It's the Committee for Public Safety. I always get those two confused. You understand why. The Vandeans outraged that the government has locked their church doors. Can you imagine living under a government that would do such a vile thing? As good and right-thinking people everywhere do in such cases, the Vandeans have armed themselves and have launched a holy insurrection against the filthy secularists. We are going to be playing this battle using one-hour skirmish war games written by John Lambshead. I have already done a review of these rule books if you want to go into more detail on exactly how these rules work. Uh, there's a link somewhere, probably in the description. Maybe one of those magic little bubbles if I can figure out how they work. Uh, until then, the important thing is these are the rules we're using. Let's take a look at our forces and take a look at the battlefield and we'll get to rolling dice. Oh, wait a minute. These handsome fellas are the blues, the soldiers of the Republic who have been tasked with seizing that hill right there. Catalano's spies have found out about this and as such, Catalano has asked Short Monsieur Delby to send a unit of locals to seize the hill first. Whoever controls the hill controls the road. If the Vandean farmers control that hill, then it will force the Blues in Cholet to take a longer route, and they will miss the battle altogether. So, as far as the capabilities are concerned, what we have here is one leader. He is... Uh, his name is Sergeant Brandon Harry, and then he has 11 soldiers with him. Those soldiers each have a pistol, as we are using the Napoleonic era rules from this rule book. It takes two actions to reload one of those muskets. They do have bayonets, and they do know how to use those, so each of these guys has the skill bruiser. You'll see what that means in a little bit. Their motivation is one... And Monsieur Brandon, he's a leader. He's a leader with a skill of one. So we're going to add one to each of his leadership cards. I think that's how that works. Anyway, let's go take a look at the Vandeans. This ragtag bunch of goofs are the Vandean farmers. And we have three different kinds of soldiers here. We have a leader who is mounted. He counts as a cavalryman. He has a leadership skill of one, and he has a pistol and a sword. So he counts as a bruiser, and he moves nine inches. Everybody, all, everybody else on the table moves six per action. Then we have four fine gentlemen with muskets. The latest, those are the woodsmen. And then we have a total of 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 farmers who do not have muskets. They only have melee weapons, but they are bruisers. They draw an extra card when they attack, and they are tough. So in melee, they will draw three cards when defending. Compared to the troops, who, because of their bayonets, will draw two cards for attack. Um, and I think that's it for those guys. The other bruisers, they draw two for both attack and defense in melee. And then these guys also are marksmen, so when they shoot, they get to draw two cards. Let's pull the camera back, and we'll set up a battlefield. Let's talk terrain effects. The stone wall takes a full action to clamber over. Any terrain piece, these guys... Well, I should... Hang on, let me back up. These guys... Take two actions anytime you want to move through them. They count as rough ground. The swamps back over here, these ponds are impassable. The entire terrain piece is impassable. Obviously the trees are not. It takes two actions to move anywhere on the hill in the center. And then these terrain pieces are a little different. 
all of the terrain items on here will block movement. It takes two actions to cross those. They also count as cover. If you're standing behind it, you draw an extra card on defense. Other than that, it's open grounds. So some of these terrain pieces are impassable. Some of them are broken ground and some of them are open ground, except for the individual terrain items that are built in. Obviously, the trees can't be passed through. The road does not affect travel at all. The next order of business is figuring out who is going to set up on which side. I am going to cut these deck of cards. Remember I made a joke about uh, rolling the dice? These sets of rules don't use dice at all. It's nothing but cards, which is very unusual. You can see I've cut them. The black deck is going to be for the bad guys, and the white and gold deck is going to be for the royalists. Royalists have the high card. They get to pick which side they want to come in on, and they want to come in on the side over there. So the Von Dans will start over there, and the Republicans over here. Now the way we're going to do this, I have three cards. We're all standing on this side, so let's go ahead and set up. I've got Sergeant Ari and four blues. I've got three blank cards, and I have two more cards that say... Ooh, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, because of the lighting. Let's go ahead and fix that. Four blues, four blues... Sergeant Brandon Harris. And then I've got three blank cards. What I'm going to do is shuffle these up, mix them up, and I'm going to put two cards on the flanks and two in the center. And whichever cards are there, that's where they're going to start. So I don't know if these soldiers... Oh, I should say it's on this side. This is the soldier side. So I don't know um, whether... Sergeant Brandon has decided to throw a strong left hand if he's going to do a pincher movement, if he's going to send most of his boys hey diddle diddle straight up the middle. The only way to find out is to shuffle and deal two, two, and that's going to be two over there. So over there on the left hand side, that is the sergeant and four of his blues. Ta-da! And then in the center, we're going to have four blues. And over here, we are also going to have four blues. There you have it. So he has gone with a fairly standard, even front. We're going to do the same thing over here on the other side. Kind of shuffle them up, mix them up a little bit. And then we're going to deal them out. So we'll do the right, the center, and the left. Right, center, left, from the Vendée perspective. And over here on the right, we've got nothing. Here in the center, we are going to have six loyal farmers. And over there on the left, we're going to have the nobleman Martin, Martin Meltzer and six loyal farmers and four valiant woodsmen coming in on that side. So let me set those guys up. All right, so you can see the nobleman Martin. He's got the brightest of the bases. He's over there on his left-hand side with four shooters and six brawlers. we got six brawlers over here. I kind of cheated them over a little bit. No, wait, I fortified the war game a little bit by moving them over. Makes it more aesthetically pleasing that they're on the road. Now, as far as the victory conditions are concerned, starting on turn six... We're going to turn over one card from one of the decks. And it shouldn't matter which one. We'll, we'll just go ahead and try to do the gold. If the card number is below the turn number, then the game is over. And whoever has the most figures standing on the hill wins the game. To start the initiative, we turn over a card. The Vandeans get a two. The Republicans get a 9. So the Republicans get to take the first action. And we turn over a 6. And that 6 means that they get to take 6 actions. So we're going to do, when you activate your boys, you have to move one guy and finish his turn. So he's going to run one guy up to here for 2 actions. He's going to run a second guy up to here for 4 actions. And then these 2 guys are going to run up to here for... 
the final six actions. And that's it. We're done. So the Vandeans will get to take nine actions. And they're going to bring these guys up. Three of them are going to take two move actions. The other three are going to take one. I have moved them up, and it is the Republicans' turn. This time they get to take seven actions. So they are going to move these two guys up. The hill blocks the line of sight, so there's nobody shooting at anybody right now. They've used two. They have five more actions to go. So they'll move all four of these guys up, and I guess we'll go ahead and move the leader up as well. All right, that movement's done, and the Vandeans get a nine of hearts. So with those nine actions, hmm... Now remember, it takes two actions to move anytime you move through broken ground. Two actions to move across the hill. So with those nine actions, they can actually bring three of these bruisers over the hill and still have three actions left for melee. Alternatively, we could try to bring some of these guys up to uh, try and get a jump on them. Now remember, they have a range of 18 inches with those muskets so i think we want to bring our guys up as fast as possible we're going to bring up all six of the bruisers on that side get a nice line of of, of fighters up front and then the shooters can pick off any survivors you can't see it but they're hiding behind this tree right here and they're hiding because they don't want to get shot these guys over here are likewise hiding behind that tree. And the shooting is likely to start because a king is going to be a whopping 12 actions. We're going to bring these guys up with one action each. With the nine actions we have left, we're going to bring him up to the top of the hill for two actions. And then he's going to take one action to take a shot. At this guy right here. Easily done. Draws a joker. Whoop joker means the turn ends immediately. Okay, good tactical advice here. Anytime you got people that are just going to move, go ahead and move them so you get those actions out of the way. That's the end of turn one. We got to shuffle the decks and redraw for initiative. There are some morale effects that you need to do, but. We're going to skip that because there's no point at this early in the game. My reading of the rules is that he takes his shot, and then you start turning over cards to see what the effect is. Meaning that the moment you turn over the card, he has fired and needs to reload, but that shot takes no effect. So he does need to spend two more actions to reload. Starting turn two... We get a jack, which counts as an 11, and we get a king, which counts as a 13. So the Vandeans get the initiative this time. I had to put this over here so I don't forget. And they only get to take four actions. Well, those four actions are going to be enough to uh, bring the four gunmen. No, oh, what do we want to do here? We could bring these guys up. Yeah, let's just go with full numbers. We're going to bring these three guys up. We've got a nice mob yeah, we're going to bring forming at the base of the hill. Well. I brought an axe man up. And it's time for the Republicans. Ten actions. That's a lot of actions. Let's learn from our mistakes. And let's bring one of these guys over to here. We'll bring a second guy over. And then we have eight more actions. So we'll... Hmm going to move. He's going to take cover behind here. So we're down to six actions. And he's going to move up to here. We're down to five. We're going to bring a second rifleman up. We're down to three. And then we're going to reload. And we're going to fire with this fella. That would be 
the last action. So, on his shooting, he gets a six. Now, he's shooting at a guy that's in the open. So, that guy dodges on a nine. And the round has no effect. On day, get to take... That black queen is going to be a 10, 11, 12. So, they get to take 12 actions. Great. We're going to bring... The bruiser up for two actions, and he's going to attack for a third action. As a tough bruiser, he's going to draw two cards in the attack, and he picks the best card. So we have a ten of diamonds. The man with the bayonet draws two cards and takes the best. And because he doesn't have any, he is eliminated. Melee is very deadly in this game. And that is... The end of that first attack. Then we're going to do three more actions to do the same thing there. And again, we have a bruiser whose high card is a jack. And we're going to defend with a high card of a nine. So a second Republican has met his match. All right. We still have six actions left to go. And we got a couple of sitting ducks up there. So let's see if we can get anybody else stuck in. Uh, this gentleman over here is five inches away. So there's three more, and we're going to do one more attack with a bruiser. High card is a nine of clubs. And with the defense of a jack, he has... He has successfully defended. The losing model is removed as a casualty. Uh, apparently, I should be drawing three cards and three cards. Very interesting. We'll start doing that. Uh, it's actually three cards for the attacker, and in a normal combat, it'll be two for the attacker and one for the defender. Because these are both bruisers, it should be three cards and two cards. So... I guess I could turn over one more just to see what happens there. Another thing that the rules say is resolve close combat as soon as two figures come into contact. I don't think that's a great rule. I think that you need to spend a and one action declaring a fight. Because otherwise you would just you could have one guy just kinda move along the line, fight, 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 fight. That's what we're gonna do. You gotta spend the action. So we got one more guy who is we'll check. We'll check the distance here just to be sure. He is six inches away. So we got one more guy that can run up and fight. Now, doing it correctly, we'll draw our three cards. King of Hearts high. If a joker is turned up here, then you separate them by two inches and you move on to the morale phase. So we get a king high and a queen high. And... We have one more Republican removed, and that's it for the Vondayans' turn. Time for a little vengeance, and we get a lot. We get a total of 13 actions. So we're going to start by taking a shot at him. And in this case, it's going to be just one card and one defense card, so that's a miss. We're going to do it again with this guy. Uh, firing ends a model's turn, by the way. He's going to take a shot at him. And the king of hearts. And an eight of diamonds. He goes down. Now, we don't know what happened to him yet. We're going to answer that later in the turn. We've only used two of our actions. He's going to go ahead and take a shot at that guy. Six versus a queen. That is a miss. All right, three actions down. Let's move this gentleman over here behind cover, and he's going to take a shot at the leader right there. That is within 12 inches, so he can do that. Seven and a seven. Ah, Reverse alphabetical order. 
clubs hearts. This is the winner. The leader is now downed. Uh, but he has to reload, doesn't he? One, two, three, four, five. We still have a lot of actions left to go. Um, so, actually, eight altogether. We have a guy hanging out back here. He's going to take a shot. Mm. No, let's have him close combat. So that's going to be an attack of a two and a three and a defense of a queen and a queen, which means he loses. All right, so Republicans, not so good at the hand-to-hand. -hand. Good to know. Uh, they've now lost four of their number compared to just one of the Von Danes, but we still have seven more actions over here. So we're going to move him up. Six actions to go. We'll move this leader up. Five actions to go. We're going to take two moves for three. Ah, let's move him up first, actually. So four, three, two, and then we're going to take one more shot at this farmer here. Four to hit, eight to dodge, and that's no effect. He is now out of ammo. Alright, so what do we do next? It's going to be the Von Dan's turn, and they get five actions. The hand-to-hand -hand seems to be working pretty well, so let's bring him up. And that's going to be three cards to two cards. So we're defending with a King of Clubs, and one, two, three. King of Clubs is the winner. Another Von Day down. Let's try another one. One, two. And we're, the Von Day is attacking with a King of Diamonds. The Von Day is defending with an Ace, which is a one. So the Republican goes down. This is a fast and bloody game. Another one hour war game that takes a lot less than one hour from the looks of things. Unless I'm doing something wrong. Republicans get to go. Seven actions. Remember, it takes two actions to reload. So we're going to take a shot with this guy to start. And that's going to be a four versus a six. No effect. We're going to reload. Ooh, do we want to reload or do we want to take some more shots? We get another guy over here. Let's go ahead and take a shot with him. Again, we're shooting at this guy. Five to hit. Joker ends the turn. Now we need to talk about morale. The way morale works is that you have a motivation. So you... Oh, oh, oh. Did I... Uh-oh. I didn't start shuffling yet, did I? Let's see if we can find that joker again. We'll check Republicans first. We're going to draw a card. They have a motivation of one for their team. So And they have lost five guys. So if this card plus one is greater than five, they get to keep fighting. Oh, they would lose, except they have a leader, one, which means he gets to draw one extra card. So they are still in the game. Likewise, the Vondaeans have a leadership of two, their motivation of two, so they add two to this. But they've only suffered two casualties. So since this can't be lower than an ace or a one, they're guaranteed to pass. Unless it's a joker. Oh, they just barely made it. With the motivation of two. However, it is worth noting that they could draw an extra card because they also have a... Oh, their leader is down, so they don't get the extra card. Never mind. But we're done. We're going to shuffle. Wait a minute. It's not turn three yet. I'm going to cut this deck because there's one last thing we have to do. Any model that is laying down at this point, after you do your motivation morale check on a red card, he's dead. And our leader on a black card stands back up. I'm going to reshuffle this deck, which brings us back to initiative, a four and an eight. So Von Day gets the drop, and they only get two actions. Hmm. Let's bring two guys up to this tree here to put more pressure. They move up, and the Republicans get to take a total of five actions. 
we're going to reload this guy and then we're going to take a shot with him. Again, we're shooting at the leader. With a three and a four, the leader is unharmed. We still have two more actions left to go. Let us reload him. And we can take one action with the Vendee boys. With just one action, huh? I probably should have had movement reduced by half here. We're going to move one of those guys up to the hill. We'll just go ahead and pick that guy. Vendee gets to take a total of 12 actions. So we will... Reload here for two, ten left. We're going to reload and fire, leaving us with six actions. There's our shot, and we're shooting at this guy, by the way. Uh, shot with an eight, defense with a jack, no good. We'll take a shot here with this guy. Again, that's two to reload and one to shoot, which would end his turn. He shoots with the queen, and he defends, so he falls down. Then we have one last guy to do something, and we're going to take a shot over there. The queen defends with a queen of hearts. I think I did this backwards last time. It's reverse alphabetical. Spades, hearts. Hearts is the winner. He's okay. And that's the end of the Republicans' turn. The Vendee now gets 10 actions. And we're going to use all 10 to put 5 guys up on the hill. 13 action for the boys in blue. We're going to start by taking a shot with him. That ends his turn. But we plink away at that leader. And, oh, he defends with a 4. And then knocks him over. It's only one shot. We're going to, what's our priority here? We'll reload with him. We'll take a shot. So we can actually take four shots. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to reload and shoot with these four guys. Bing, 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 bing. Right across the way. Um, starting with this guy. Shooting with a two. Defending with an eight to miss. We're going to shoot at this guy with a jack. And he is defending with a king. Shooting with this guy, hits with a 10, defends with a jack, man. And then that guy shoots with a 4 and defends with a 10. I am astonished. The, uh, somebody is smiling down upon these, these men crying du Lois. Somebody is on their side. Joker, turn ends. So that's the end of turn 3. Now it is turn 4. If they can keep those five guys on there. Oh, wait a minute. We've got one guy. Oh, first we have to do morale. If this is, or motivation, right? If this plus one is higher than three, they get to keep fighting. If this plus one is higher than five, they get to keep fighting. And they actually get to draw two because they got a leader one. Leader one here is down. That's going to be a problem. Then we need to check for casualties on the Vendee. Black means he is... Oh, hey, I'm okay, guys. And then over here, the leader dies. So that is four casualties, and now they're only going to draw one card for their motivation at the end of this next turn. It is turn four. And we'll cut the decks... An interesting strategy here. I think we're going to leave these guys to bullet sponge on the hill and start bringing the shooters up to start returning fire to these guys. But we'll have to see who goes first. A 9 and a 6 means the Republicans get to go first with a whopping 13 actions. Alright, well, we can take four shots. We're going to move one guy. First, we're going to move him over. All right, so he moved over to there, and then we're going to take shots. One, two, three, and four. So 
our first shot is going to be at him with a two. He defends with an eight. Then we're going to take a shot with him at this guy on top of the hill with a six. Defends with a six. Hearts is higher than clubs. Then we're still shooting at the guy on top of the hill. An ace with a ten. And then this guy is going to shoot at him. And that's the end of the turn. Turn five. Not looking good for the Republicans. Uh, we don't have anybody knocked over, so we just have to do motivation. If this plus one, two, they break. The, the Vandeans do not. Ah, oh, wait. This is where the leaders come in. Old Sergeant Brandon Harry means they get to turn over a second card, and that second card does it. So now we move on. No casualties. Reshuffle. And right back to where we were before. It is now turn five. So this is the last turn where we're not going to have a... Uh, where, where the game definitely goes on. Um, starting next turn, after we do all of the casualties, we'll draw a card. And if that card is lower than the turn number, the game ends. So the Republicans really have to start putting some pressure on there. Uh, checking. Oh, you know what? Let's cut that. Keep it honest. Cut this. And check them around. <laughs> All right, we're going to reshuffle. That's the end of turn five. It is now turn six. So we have to check motivation. They pass. And they pass. Four casualties, a six, five. So we are going to play turn six. And at the very end of turn six, after motivation, after casualties, that's when we'll turn over a card. And if that card is a... What do we call it? So we have to beat it? No, let's say let's equal. So on turn six, it's a six or lower ends of the game. And this is turn six right now. Republicans get to go first. A queen means they get to take four shots. All right, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to fire at this guy. No, we're going to start here, though. Firing at the man in blue. Successful defense. Firing at the man on top of the hill. Eight versus a seven, so that knocks him down. Firing at this man. Now the, the practice is starting to pay off, so we knock him down as well, and that's the end of the Republican turn. The Vontaeans are going to get to take a total of nine actions. So we're going to start over here, and we're going to move this shooter up. Oh, now the first thing we're going to do is move this guy. That's six inches to right there to get one more body on there. So that's one of our nine. Then we're going to move him up to there. And he's going to take a shot over here. Now this gentleman is hiding in cover. So he gets to draw two. It's going to be a miss. He gets to draw an extra defensive card. We got six more actions. The first thing we're going to do is bring this guy up to the tree. And he's going to take a shot at. Oh, there's no line of sight there. All right, we have five more actions. We're going to bring him. Seven. Eight. Mm, where do we bring this guy? I guess we'll bring him to here. And then he can take a shot at this guy. Well, he better do it over here. It's it's a little safer line of sight there. Uh, defends with a 7 and the shot. Now, he is a marksman. So he draws two cards. In fact, all of these guys are marksmen. And that puts him on the ground. But he has taken his shot. And that's the end of the Vendée turn. The Republicans get eight actions. So with those eight actions, they can... Uh, you know, he's shooting at somebody in cover. 
So we're going to start by taking a shot with him, reload, and shoot. He gets a 7. We're shooting at this gentleman who successfully defends. Then he's going to shoot. So it's with 3, 4, 5, 6 with a 3, defending with a queen. And we have two more actions. We'll go ahead and reload this guy over here. Vande. Rolling a 9. Two. Seven actions left to go. Three, four. Five. And taking a shot over here for six. Marksman draws a two and a ten. Defender draws an ace. And he lays down on the ground. I think it's two more actions left. We're going to move him up and we're going to go ahead and fight. So he fights with a five. We're defending with a red queen. And then we get an eight and a ten. And that is a win for the queen. So hand-to-hand -hand combat not working so well for the bruisers. Oh, I think that's the end of the Vendée's turn. So the Republicans are going to take four actions. And we'll... Start by, hmm, let's reload and take a shot with him at the gentleman. Four, eight, gentleman survives. We get another guy over here. He's going to take a shot with a jack and a five puts him down. Vande. Six actions, huh? Gonna take a shot here. The marksman draws two. Oh, that's it. Turn over. All right. First, we have check motivation. If this is a four higher, which it is, and we'll actually draw the two cards because he gets his extra, and then we draw one card for these guys. And now, if this is a well, let's just see four. Oh boy, it's a tie. They have five guys down. With the four, and just like that, the Vandeans retire from the field. They have simply taken too many casualties. This plus your motivation has to beat. See what I paid for? Oh my gosh. I got it wrong. Their motivation is two. I should be adding two to this. Okay, so with five casualties, four plus two, that's a win. Now we got to check casualties, and we're going to use each people's each team's deck for the casualties. So we're going to check this guy first, and then this guy. On a red card, he's out, and on a black card, he stands up. So he stands up, and he is out. And the Von, and the Republicans now have six casualties. We've got to check one, two. For the Vondeans as well. The first guy is dead and the second guy is dead. So they're now up to a total of seven casualties. A lot of blood on that hill. And the turn is over. So we're going to... Oh, we got one more guy over there. One more Vondean. And he is also dead. The last thing we do is draw a card. If this is a six or less, the Vondeans win. Just like that. Just like that, the Vandeans win. They've got five guys on the hill. And the game is ended. They have taken the hill. I guess night falls and Sergeant Brandon calls his guys back. He says, look, we've taken 50% casualties. It's just not worth it. We're going to have to go back and report that uh, the Vandeans were here in force, and they all had machine guns, and there was nothing we could do. It was just too much. We had bad intel, and the sun got in my eyes, and every excuse under the book, I had a little bit too much to drink. He is French, after all. And whatever else he'll tell his masters back at Cholet. So the, uh, the columns coming out of Cholet are going to have a much harder time subduing the Vendée, which is a result that is kind of in keeping. Remember that the 
Republicans who went into the Vendée were only a couple of months, even in some cases, removed from the heady days of whacking off the heads of rich jerks that had made their lives uncomfortable. And then they said, hey, I'm going to need you to uh, shoot your fellow countrymen. And they were like, what? Oh, he's not one. He's one. What? I didn't sign up for that. So they weren't highly motivated, which is why I gave them a motivation of one. The Vendée were fighting for their liberty, their freedom. So I gave them a motivation of two. The points are almost balanced. I think the Vendée had like one or two more points. I think it was like 30 to 29. If I had given them the extra motivation, then it would have been 30 to 30, even Stevens. But it would not have been historical. And sometimes it's okay to go for a historical game instead of a perfectly balanced game. And I think... All right, so let's talk strategy here. The strength of the Republicans is the shooting. The strength of the Vendée is hand-to-hand -hand combat. By seizing the hill first, it forced the Republicans into a shooting match, or to a shooting gallery, and the cards just weren't coming up. They couldn't hit the broadside of a barn until near the very end. I think if they had been able to last one or two more turns, they might have been able to eke out a victory. As my first game, I think this is a pretty good scenario. It's been a while since we had to line them up and fight over the center of the board. Uh, in the future, we may go ahead and try some new scenarios. We may actually weaken the Vondans. That bruiser thing, three cards to two, that's big. Because you're probably going to get a face card on the three. A lot harder to get it on the two. That makes a big difference. Uh, you blackjack fans can tell us the exact odds of winning in one of those situations. Leaving the leader undefended was a big mistake. Because as you saw, just drawing one card, whew, that's rough for the motivation. You know, a leader one makes a big difference. I think it means that you're, you move from like a 25% chance of failing to 50%, which is huge. Uh, scenario design. If we get into a situation where they are defending behind, say, a stone wall, so they get that extra card, it's three on three in melee, they're going to have a lot more staying power. A lot of that is just that they had the more activations as well. They were able to bring their boys up faster, and because they don't have any guns to reload, they're not wasting a whole lot of actions standing in place reloading. So, Kind of an interesting game. Kind of a lot of little wrinkles to this. We'll definitely be playing some more of this in the future. This is probably a better rule set for the video presentations. You get some motion, some sweeping back and forth. We even had a Republican kind of sweeping around to hit this thing from the very flank. Uh, and, yeah, I like this. I think we can explore this a little bit more. We may even give a shot to, uh, in the future, you know, I want to play another couple of games to really get my hands around this. But in the future, we may go ahead and throw some science fiction figures down. We may go ahead and create some, some fun house rules for a fantasy skirmish, right? What, what happens if the guys, if you've got undead? And now, in this game, they, they fall down until the end of the turn. What if I could spend an action to stand them up? That'd be something, wouldn't it? So, a lot of possibilities here. Definitely be giving this another shot. But first, coming up in the next episode, we're going to go back to Rogue Stars, and we are going to go back to the Black Raven, and we're going to go back to the Space Station to try to deal with some tracking biochips that have been put in Poultry Joe and into Marion, and then we can finally get to Chalb, home planet of the Magic Space Baby, where I've got some gonzo bonkers stuff to show you. So look for that coming up in a few days. Till then, remember, I'm praying for you.